Hi everyone, I'm Christina Roberts, a graduate student at Liberty University Online, and today I will be addressing the topic of women during the Revolutionary Era with a specific focus on historian Mercy Otis Warren. Warren was unique in the fact that much of her views can be traced through her own personal written documents. This is in contrast to other famous revolutionary women who have been preserved through the oral tradition, such is the case with the controversial story behind Betsy Ross. In the article, How Betsy Ross Became Famous, Laurel Thatcher Ulrich reminds us that ordinary women made history by telling stories, attaching labels to family relics, and joining honorary societies. While many historians discount the story behind Betsy Ross due to the lack of historical documentation, Ulrich suggests that one must examine Ross's story and find out what it tells us about how women perceived their own history. According to Ulrich, the perception that Ross's story portrays is the boundary that women broke between the male world by elevating their devotion to the state. A prime example of this broken boundary is found within the life and work of Mercy Otis Warren. Warren was the only daughter of 13 children, born in Barnstable, Massachusetts on September 14, 1728. Recognizing her intellect at a very young age, her father allowed her to sit in tutoring sessions with her brother James. These sessions were administered by their uncle, Reverend Jonathan Russell. Russell also gave access to Warren to his library, and he is credited for her desire to understand history. Further informal education came through her brother James, as he shared the knowledge he had gained through his Harvard education. On November 14th, Mercy Otis married James Warren whose family was of prominence and his ancestry could be traced to the passengers of the Mayflower. Her husband admired her intellect and he was very supportive of her writing endeavors. The inspiration for her writing can be understood from her family connections to the fight for independence. Many of her sons served in the war for independence, paying the ultimate price with life and limb other male members served in the legislation, linking her with George Washington, and she had a close relationship with John and Abigail Adams. Warren would often reach out to John Adams for his guidance on her writings. And in regards to her satirical work, Adams said that there was no one equal to her. Also referring to Warren, he stated, I know of none, ancient or modern, which have reached the tender, the pathetic, the keen and severe, and at the same time, the soft, the sweet, the amiable, and the pure and greater perfection. An examination of her writings demonstrates the truth in Adam's words. Her tenderness can be found in a poem she wrote called An Amiable Friend Mourning the Death of Her Father, and in it she writes, Complain no more of death's extensive power, whose scepter wafts us to some blissful shore, where the rough billows that roll o'er the head, that shake the frame and fill the mind with dread, and hushed in silence the soul serene looks back delighted on the closing scene. Her collection of poetry is extensive and continues to demonstrate her elegance in prose and justify Adam's words about her. However, ultimately, there would be a rift between her and John Adams over the Constitution. Warren was an anti-federalist, and she made her concerns known in her work Observations of the New Constitution and on the Federal and State Conventions. Her concern for the Constitution was its, quote, undefined meaning and in some parts and in the ambiguity of expression in others. And she believed this was dangerously adapted to the purposes of an immediate aristocratic tyranny. Warren entered herself into the arena of politics when it was considered unladylike to do so. 
this is fortunate for a unique perspective into the revolutionary women. And as Warren herself intended, her works still speak to generations today.